hey, I'm all done. There's kind of a dull side and then there's a side that's a little bit more shiny. I knew that I wanted to be about halfway. I'm going to want two uh, pullouts here. At this point, honestly, I don't know if this is going to work or not. And I'm only adding an inch to, to this seam because that's the seam that's going to have the flat felt seam on it. One thing that you'll notice about fabric is that fabric has grain in it um, that runs a certain way. Now I'm actually going to run into a problem down here. I already know that I am because I'm doing two separate flat felt seams that are going to run into each other like sides together. Hi everybody! So I did some research and um, I went ahead and I cut out these little corner pieces that are going to go on the edge here of my little guidelines on my uh, shelf. And so um, I actually went ahead and started to serge one of them, but I decided uh, since they're so small then I'm actually going to go ahead and fire, uh, fire one. So I kind of wanted to show you how you do that. I basically just use your standard lighter and it, it takes a delicate, a really delicate touch. You don't have to be touching the fabric directly with the flame. You just kind of move it in until you just start to see the edge of the fabric start to kind of shrink back a little bit. And you have to do it because if you do it too much it's going to just completely go. So it's, it's a very delicate touch. So all you do is you get your lighter and like I said you just slowly move it in. Okay, and now I'm starting to see it go just barely. You just do the edge like that. The next one here. Okay, that one I did a little bit, probably too close. This next one. Okay, I'm just barely starting to see it go there. Okay, and if I can't quite see it very well, I'll, I'll move my hand down. Okay, and I got all that one. Okay, one more here. Just starting to see it go there. Like I said, it's very delicate. And so now all of it, all of it is fused. All the edges are fused, fused here. You know, if I wanted to cut them a little bit bigger, I could take more of a, a chunk out of them, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and be rolling over the edges and everything. And when I get everything together, I might actually go ahead and surge it, uh, surge everything together too, just to give it some extra durability. But anyway, there it is. So the other thing you have to think about too when you're putting these guys on is you have to again, you know, figure out okay what's the dull side and what's the shiny side, right? Because we want to make sure we keep track of all that. So I think the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to go ahead and press these edges because they're going to be rolled under and then stitched down so uh, to give it some extra stability. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first, get it all set up, and then I'll pin them on there and we should be good to go. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I don't know if you can see my finger in here but I've gone ahead and set my iron onto synthetics because it's nylon and if I put too much heat on it it's going to melt. Another super cool thing about having a muslin table is that you can also use it to press things on. I am actually going to mark these. This is where you'll see the uh, ruler comes in very handy. I'm going to go ahead and mark it at a half an inch. So you can see I put it in there and because this ruler is see-through I can put it right on the half inch mark and then I can go ahead and mark it with my chalk pencil here. Now I have um, I have the dull side up right now because that's the way I'm going to fold it. Okay, there's one. Okay, dull side up. Mark that. And mark that. And we'll just keep going just like that. So now the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and fold this over. Just like that. Go ahead and start to press it. Okay. 
And just like that. I'll give the rest of it a good press too here. Okay. Now it's not quite laying down the way I want it to, so I'm going to go ahead and bump up my heat just a little bit. About halfway between synthetic and wool. And, you know, each iron is different. Each, you know, each iron, some irons are hotter than others. Um, so you're just going to have to kind of play it by ear. Okay, that's pretty good. As long as I can keep it over. Okay. We have our next side here. Now, one thing you also have to be very careful of when you're doing this, because I have done this before. You have to make sure you keep your plastic ruler out from underneath the iron because if you don't that will happen. It can melt. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and stitch this together um, and I'm going to stitch it the way it is because I'm actually going to eventually put bias tape all the way around it so I just want to secure it down so it's not going to move anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, anchor it all together. So here I am stitching it all together and uh, I'm not really big on uh, pinning things. It's not my thing. For me it goes a lot faster if I don't pin stuff, but there are cases where you do need to pin stuff. And there's nothing wrong with pinning. I think that, um, you know, it's good if, if it makes, you know, I, I think if, if you're at all uncomfortable with what you're doing, then you should pin it to make sure that everything's going to line up. The only thing, the only reason I don't like to pin is because I don't like putting extra holes in my, uh, my fabric but if you are going to pin one of the things that you want to do is you want to pin perpendicular to the seam that you're going to make so go this way so you'll, you'll want to run this way the reason being um, because what will happen is when you're sewing along it's kind of like a baseball hitting a, a baseball bat two round objects hitting each other um, and what will happen is the needle will come it'll strike if it hits it dead on uh, it might bend it, but it's very rare that it's going to do that. What usually happens is it'll it'll deflect and go right beside it. Whereas if, if the pin is this way, there's all these chances for it to hit, right? See, so if you put it this way, it's only got one chance, and it's usually going to go deflect off of it just like that. Okay, so I've uh, gone ahead and, and pinned this. Now, again, I'm contradicting myself but saying that I don't like to pin things, and normally that's true. But in this case, I want everything to line up perfectly. So, um, so what I did, th this is really handy, the way that we did this. You can see I've got these two little ears that stick out. And so what I did was, as I was pinning this on, I just lined those two little ears up to make sure they were coming out uh, at the same sp spot. So let's go ahead and sit down and start stitching this on. I'm going to do two, two stitch lines uh, on this back side, and then I'll just do a simple uh, single stitch up here. Okay, so I have just learned a valuable lesson here. I started from the edge and started to work my way in, and because this stuff is so slippery, it started to develop a little pucker here. So I'm actually going to take this out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start at the point and work my way out, and then I'm going to start at the point and work my way out. And that should uh, help keep everything aligned all nice and neat. Okay, there is our little reinforcement we have there. Back didn't line up completely perfectly unfortunately so on the next one I want to be a little bit more careful to get the points exactly in the same spot but um, I might try to get some light on it and so I can see but uh, you know for my first one I think it turned out alright. Shoot! So one of the reasons I sewed actually sewed it from this side was because this is the side that most people are going to see because it's on top. Most people aren't going to see the underside. If they're looking at the underside of my shelf on my hammock well they better be very familiar with me. So this is what my little shelf is going to look like. You can see I've got my little book in there. Like if I was snoozing away and I needed to read a book and I got a little tired, I could just throw that up into the shelf. Here's how it goes. Voila! Okay. Now I'm not going to attach the webbing on there until I get the bias tape on there. So uh, tomorrow we're going to go ahead and we're going to learn how to do bias tape. Uh, our own homemade bias tape. It's not really that hard. Um, and it's a lot cheaper than buying it by the yard. But like I said, I'm not a pinner. So here's where I'm going to contradict myself. <laughs>